everyone is very welcome and uh, we thank God for your lives. You are here not by accident because God wants you to be here today. He has a word for your life, a word of grace. And the word of the day is titled, How to Deal with Troubles We Suffer. How to Deal with Troubles We Suffer. And only God knows that we suffer troubles. We do. We do suffer troubles. We go through all kinds of problems every single day. But some of these problems, when you are going through them, you wonder if you will come out of it at all. Sometimes you cannot see the end of the tunnel at all. Situation like, you know, a marriage that is collapsed. What do you do? A marriage that you have been in there for so long, building that home, and then suddenly so much problems after 30 years of your life, and everything is just completely chaos. Or it could be something of your health, some kind of illness, something that you are not expecting. Among all the plans that you were projecting upon your life, and then you just went for a regular doctor's visit, and then they are telling you something that dramatically is going to change your life. You are now sick. How do you deal with that? It could be a situation of uh, a loved one that you have lost. And especially in such a time like this, that, you know, people are dying here, dying there, what is not expected, just suddenly had come upon us. How do you deal with that? All of us sitting down here, none of our family members uh, have died. So it, it, we can feel the pains out there, but when it is really you, it's a different, a different form of pain. It's a fact. And uh, or when you suffer also attacks, from people that you have helped. A time comes that the whole situation has been turned around. People that you stood for and probably even lived for. And the time comes that these are the same people when you were praying, uh, Holy Ghost, send fire to my enemies. You were leaving these ones aside because those are your circle. But then a time comes they turn around that's the time you are so broken because you never, you never saw it coming. So, so, so hard. And how do you deal with that? Okay. So, the situation here is problems. From here, from there, how do we come out? How do you manage it? How do you deal with it? How do you do that? I'm always quoting this scripture, the book of John, so I, I told myself, I said, we're going to look into that. John 16, and the verse is 33. Let me read 33a. Jesus Christ is the one who made this statement. Believers go through more problems than unbelievers in general. Because you know why? The fact that you were born again when you were a child of God the type of messages that we preach, if you don't look into the Bible right, the message of health and prosperity gospel is not the perfect will of God for our lives as Christians. It is hard for a child of God to go through situation and uh, you know, we went, you know, we have gone to the extent whereby we say, God, where are you? And it came out of the mouth of a believer. 
simply because of the pressure of the situation. So much pressure. But Jesus never said that we will not go through problems. There is nowhere in the Bible that Bible tells you that you as a child of God, you're going to have it easy. It is completely the opposite. So get yourselves, your heart prepared so that when you are going through difficult times, at least you shall remember that your God told you. Amen and amen. Let me repeat that word from the mouth of Jesus. John 16, 33. Jesus said, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. Ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. It's a great world of comfort. That is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the gospel of Christ. In the world, you will have tribulation. But in Christ, you will have peace. In John 17, you remember Jesus Christ, the prayer he prayed for us, the disciples, he was about to be glorified. And he told the Father that he is here in the world, but he is not from the world. The disciples are here in the world, but they are not from the world. You and myself, we are here in the world, but we are not from the world. Being in and not being part of it are two different things. You are in, but you are not part of it. This is exactly what Jesus Christ is saying. He said, in the world, he never said that the Father should take us away from the world. But he said, Father, protect them from the evil one in the world. John 17. So, you want to make sure that as you live your life, you want God's protection upon your life every single day in this world here. You want to make sure that you are in Christ because that is the only place you have your peace. Somebody should say amen for me. Okay. The peace aspect of it is so important. Very, very important. You can have it all, but if you don't have peace. You can have, you know, I mean, this time you can tell we are living period of time that no amount of money is enough for anybody. They said they have not gotten the, the cure. There is no but sin. You might have the money, you want to buy it, but it's not there. So what do you do? If you are not under that grace of God, and you catch this virus, that will be it. No matter how much money you have, it's not something that money can buy. Some people go ahead and say money can buy health. Okay, right now, go and buy that health. It's not true. It's just not true. We say so many things. He said, money solve all problems. No. You and I are living it. Money does not solve all problems. So don't let the money get into your head. Because you can have it, but no peace. And we said that the peace that we are looking for is in our Lord Jesus Christ. To God alone be the glory. Whatever that you and I will be going through, any hardship designed and programmed for our lives, Jesus said that he has been there that he had already overcome the world and he's watching over us in him peacefully to go through the world and do the perfect will of the Father and we shall come out strengthened unto his glory. Amen and amen. He never said we will not go through problems. We will go through problems, but we will go through problems in peace. 
we will go through problems in peace. How can you go through problems in peace? Because problems are not set for peace. Problems are set for disturbance. Afflictions and everything that you go through, you are just not yourself. You can't sleep. Your mind is not right. Your thinking and everything else. Problems all over. But Jesus said, in me, I am assuring you that you will go through disturbance from the problems, harassment and hardship from problems, but I, the Lord, I will make sure that you go through these things in peace. You will be in the fire, but you will not feel the fire. You will be in the water, but the water will not swallow you. This is what the Lord is saying. You will go through situations, but this situation, they cannot destroy your life. Because you are in Christ. So that is why I said that the most important thing for a child of God is to make sure that you are in Christ. Because peace is all in all unto God's glory. Amen and amen. Okay. We bless the name of the Lord. Let me read the, the message version of this scripture. The message says, I told you all this so that trust in me, you will be unshakable and assured, deeply at peace. You will be unshakable and assured, deeply at peace. If Jesus says you will be unshakable, it means that there, there are going to be things meant to shake you. Amen and amen. amen. If he says that you will be deeply assured, meaning that there are things set to disturb your peace. Do you know what insurance means? It's in the same, you know, connotation with assured. When you have insurance on your car and you have an, you know, you, you have had an accident and by God's grace you come out of it and you are alive, you say, Lord, I am so grateful to you. The car is, uh, there is insurance on the car, insurance will take care of the car. You drive the car, you are sure that if you hit someone or someone hits you, insurance will take care of it. Jesus said, when you are in me, it is more than insurance. The lowest that you can think of is having insurance over everything that you do in life. Amen and amen. amen. Jesus said, in this godless life or godless world, you will continue to experience difficulties. But take heart. I have conquered the world. You will continue to experience what? Difficulties. So, when we are, Pastor, what? I just, I can't take it anymore. Okay. Now that you are saying you can't take it anymore, if Jesus comes in the middle of the night and said, my son, my daughter, I heard you. Don't worry. I know you have had enough of this world. I am taking you home. Hear me. You that is saying you cannot take it anymore. Jesus will show up in the middle of the night and tell you, my son, my daughter, I heard your prayers. You said you cannot take it anymore. So now I am taking you home. Tonight you are dying. I'm very sure that <laughs> you'll be pleading for the Lord. Say, Lord, come later. Not, not right now. This is it. This is it. Amen and amen. Continuously experiencing difficulties. Part of Christian's life. But then pray for the peace of the Lord. Now look at this. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 16. Here is the word of God. It says, For which cause faint not in the midst of the problems? All problems, 
that we faint not. But though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. We're going to explain ourselves. Because the good news says, for this reason, we never become discouraged. For what reason? For everything that we have said. For you knowing that you are in Christ, that peace is your portion. You knowing that the Lord is with you, no matter what comes on your way, you just have to remind yourself that you are in Christ. That no matter what, the Lord will see you through. He will take you through. Somebody should say amen for me. Okay, so he said that things from outside look like, you know, it's just, they are just going to crush your life. But then, the inside of you must not look or you must not behave like that which is set to destroy your life. Do you know what? Let me explain myself. Some people, they look at the problem and they start thinking like the problem. If you look at the problem and you start thinking like the problem, all that you think of is problem. All that you see is what is problem. This is what Jesus Christ is saying here through Apostle Paul. He said that even though our outward man perish, that is pressure of the physical aspect of it. Pressure, you look at the situation, it is just too much. You're going to feel it. You will know that things are just set to be so hot upon your life. But the Lord said that if you're going to look at the heat of what is around you, it will not help you. When you are in Christ, what you do, you must always look inside. Amen and amen. Looking inside meaning that don't let the problem speak to you. Let the Holy Spirit in you talk to you. That is what Jesus is trying to say here. So if you're going to, you know, some people, when they are, they are going through problems, we can also extend this message that way. They are looking for solution, you know, from all this. Physical, you know, so they talk to this one. This one is giving that advice. That one is giving that. You are confused. You are confused. The Lord said his peace that he is talking about when you are in Christ, you can only have that peace if you tune your ears to the inner voice. Not what the problem is speaking to you. Amen and amen. This is very important. So good news. Good news, put it this way. He said, for this reason, we never become discouraged. Even though our physical being is gradually decaying, yet our spiritual being is renewed day by day. You know, this is, this is so important and it's very, 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 you know, you have to notice it because the physical being being decayed, <laughs> but the spiritual being is renewed day by day. So you're going to see that the problem has so much pressure on you, so much, to the extent that people look at you and they say, oh, no, 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 this is not my sister, this is not the sister that I know. She's finished. They look at you from outside. They can tell that you are in trouble. But you, that is going through the trouble. People look at you, they say that they don't know how you are still around because this situation, you, would, you should or you would have been dead by this time. But for one reason or another, you are still around. You are going on. You don't have as much as they have. You are just under pressure, upon pressure, upon pressure, and uh, you are still around. People see, they say that, we don't know how you do it. We just don't know how you do it. We thank God because they can never know. Because it's not you that is doing it, it's the one inside that is doing the work. Amen and amen. That is what Jesus is saying. To keep that peace going. We don't look at the pressure. 
You do not know. You don't know how the problem is going to be solved. But that is none of your business to try finding out how the problem is going to be solved. Your business is to always listen from within. Allow the Holy Spirit to work in you. You're going to hear what people don't hear. You're going to see the Lord will give you dreams that people are not receiving them. Where you look and where you hear from is very important in time of trouble. If you're going to hear from sources and friends and this one, oh, this one had had the experience. We are not talking about those things. The Lord is telling you that as a child of God, there is only one channel, only one channel that a child of God must listen from in the midst of your problems is the channel of the Holy Spirit within. So your spirit man is renewed day by day. But you know what? The outward man, that is what people are seeing. They see you going down and down, but they don't know that every single day, your spirit is up and up. That is how it is. You wake up in the morning, you have received that which will keep you going throughout the day. They see you, they say that, ah, we don't think that he will make it today, but they, don't worry, they will see you tomorrow. They will see you tomorrow. They will see you tomorrow. So, the message translation put it this way. He said, so we are not giving up. We are not what? Giving up. It is because of what we know that we don't give up. People have money. They even lose money and they start killing themselves. The guy had invested in stocks. And stock goes down and the guy is jumping from a, I don't know what level floor to come and kill himself. Seriously? Why would you do that? Because the problem is talking to you. The problem is saying that you are finished now that you don't have any more money. You are gone. But if you listen from within, if you are a child of God, the spirit of the Lord, I mean, sometimes you won't even allow the spirit of God to talk. The word of God that built you up. The word of God that built you up will speak to you right away. He said, what is it? Is it not God that gave me this money? Is God dead? Is, is he still on the throne? Am I still alive? Then the God that did it, he can do it again. Somebody should say amen for me. The word of comfort that people don't have, that is what is killing them. Somebody jump simply because devil told him that you are, you, you are finished. It's over. But you, you lost it. But then you stand and say that God gave it. He's still here. He's definitely going to give it again. He will give it again. So why should I kill myself? And knowing my God... <laughs> I remember what he did for Job. He's definitely going to double me. He's definitely going to double that which I lost. That is the God that we serve. So we are not giving up. He said, how could we, even though on the outside, it often looks like things are falling apart on us. On the inside, where God is making new life, not a day, not a day goes by without his unfolding grace. Hallelujah. Not a day goes by without his what? Unfolding grace. That is what keeps you going. When they see you and they think that you will not make it for tomorrow, but then tomorrow they see you, it's because in the midst of the night, there is something called renewing you day by day. And that renewing you day by day, it is the unfolding grace of God given to you in the midst of that night. The morning you wake up again, problem is there, but you are stronger. Hallelujah. It's amazing. The word of God is so sweet. And when you have understanding, it makes everything easy. To God alone be the glory. So, in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17, 
Apostle Paul continues. He said, for our light affliction, our light is not heavy, our light affliction. It is very true because knowing the platform that is set for us as children of God, being in Christ and peace all around you, even in the midst of problems, every problem that comes to you is light. It can never be heavy. Never. Because you don't carry it. You don't feel it. The Lord is seeing you through. So that is why he said, our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. These are very powerful words. The problems, Paul said that they are light. They are just small. They are lightweight. It's not heavy that we cannot carry. Because we don't carry the one in us carry these problems. Good news said. And this small and temporary trouble we suffer. Small and temporary trouble we suffer. Every trouble, every problem that comes on your way, it is set for a time. Somebody should say amen for me. Yes. Every trouble, every trouble. That is why the Bible says it is small. It is just light. Light affliction. Because there is a time. It will not stay. It will not be here forever. It's set for a time. You know, it is very different because people go through problems and they, they think that it will never end. If you are going through a problem that you are thinking the problem will never end, that is why they end their lives. But if you, you are going through problems and you know that this is just for a time, you just set your heart right. He said, no matter what, I will come out of this. No matter what, this, a time is coming that this problem is not going to be here. And the Holy Spirit will remind you that don't worry, the Lord is with you. Don't worry, the Lord is with you. So, small and temporary trouble we suffer will bring us a tremendous and eternal glory, much greater than the trouble. It is very true. If a child of God will stand and continue with God, and every single trial that the enemy will bring on your way, you will not give up on faith. Well, one day you're going to find yourself before our Lord Jesus Christ. You know the recommendation that the Lord will make of you. He will say, well done. Well done, faithful servant. Come in. Amen and amen. amen. So you can tell that the dimension of life that we have in this world here is on two levels. We live in this world, but we set our eyes to eternal things. To go through every single problem that we will face in this world here. Because we know that we are going somewhere. Amen and amen. amen. It is very, very true because, you know, when your eyes, let's say you are living your life. And your eyes are set, you know that ahead of you, there are such amazing and glorious stuff are waiting for you. And you are striving to achieve those. No matter how much you are going through, all that you see is the end result. What you get at the end of it. And the Lord is saying exactly the same thing. That no matter how much problems we're going to go through here, compared to that which are reserved for us in eternal glory, the things that come out of any child that comes to this world here and do the Father's will and come out overcoming the world as Jesus overcome it. He said your reward is just beyond understanding. It's tremendous. Amen and amen. So we set our eyes on that which is ahead of us. Amen and amen. Okay. So, verse 18 of 2 Corinthians 4 says, Why we look not at the things which are seen, 
But at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. This is very, very important. That is why we said, if you look, you are going through problems and you look at the problem, it's not going to help you because the problem, first of all, is not eternal. The problem is set for a time. But if you can look at the plan of God for your life, that which God had called you, do you know that sometimes you come out of dreams that you have had at night? You saw yourself probably dead. Or people call you and say, that, oh, I dreamt about you and you are dead. What do you do? You pray. You tell the person, pray for me as well. But one thing that is sure, you spoke within your heart. He said, I cancel that. You know why? Because you know that you cannot die. You know that you have not fulfilled God's perfect will for your life. You know what your God showed you. You know where you are going. You know what you are set for. Therefore, when the enemy brought that dream to you, what did you say? He said, me over my dead body. Over my dead body. It will, it will not come to pass. I know this because I am looking into things that are beyond what these people are seeing. God had promised me there is a plan, a divine plan, heavenly plan upon my life and I'm nowhere. I am nowhere in the plan. How can I die? Cannot die. Set our eyes on heavenly things for that which the Lord has set for our lives. So, that is what he's saying. When you are going through problems, where you look is very important. If you look at the problem, you will have problems. But if you don't look at the problem, he said, don't look at the problem. Because the problem is what you see. So why we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. The inside one. He said, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. The Lord is not done with you. God says that I'm not done. There is no way you will die. You are going through trouble, but I'm not done. There is no way that you will not come out of this. You will come out of this. And a matter of fact, you will come out to have even more trouble. But I will still be with you and continue my plan with you. Amen and amen. Wonderful wonderful. Then in verse 18, he said, for we fix our attention not on things that are seen, but on things that are not seen or on things that are unseen. What can be seen lasts only for a time, but what cannot be seen lasts forever. So I love this part because it's talking about fixing our attention. You know, when something has your attention, he has you, grab you. But the Lord said that if you fix your attention on the problem, the problem will destroy you. But fix your attention on the unseen. In other words, the things that you just know. Nobody, you know, no, you are hearing things. You, you know, people are saying, no, oh, do it this way, do it that way. They give you counsel, advice, and all that. But you, you know yourself, you know how God works with you. You know where the Lord took you from. And you keep that peace of the Lord and said, I have to endure this. I have to go through this situation. I am not going to take the sh this shortcut. I will continue. It looks very hard today. But I know the God that I serve. The same God. When it was hard, who took me so far and brought me here? He didn't bring me here to kill me. He did not bring me here for a failure. He did not bring me here for disappointment. And matter of fact, God cannot allow them to put me in shame. Hey! He will continue. He has a plan for my life. Unto his own glory. 
So I have to set my eyes on that which people cannot see. Nobody, unless you tell them your story, they don't know. They don't know your story. They can judge you. They can say whatever that they want, that they want to say. But they don't know you. You alone know where the Lord took you from. Therefore, I want to stay with my God. And may God help me gradually. You know, life is, uh, some people started it so fast and they run so fast. And if you don't pay attention, you will just go out there because shortcuts are there in life. The result of that, we have people in prison because the person wants to make money quickly. Let me sell drug. They catch you. They said 25 years of your life. We lock you in prison. That is 25 years of your life. Even if someone takes one day of your life and wasted your life, how much more? 25 years. Do you know what God can do with 25 years of your life? So why the rush? Why can't you wait for the plan of God? Let me go to school. Let me take it easy. Let me not run. You know, our God is wonderful. Sometimes the same people that were mocking you, you will find them on the roadside. Though. You will find them on the roadside and you will be in the car passing. Say, ah, but this one started a long time ago. How come that he's still here? Be careful because the person wants to do it himself. But if you wait for the plan of Almighty God, through the unseen things, things that you hear, they don't hear. Things that you know, they don't know. Things that you have been through and they were nowhere in your life. But today they are judging you. If only you will remember these things and keep yourself going. The Lord is still with me. He will carry me through. It's just a matter of time. You shall surely come out of the problem. Amen and amen. amen. Where I fix my attention is very, very important. The message says, the things we see now are here today. Gone tomorrow. The things we see now, they are here today. Gone tomorrow. But the things we can see would not last forever. Hallelujah. Sometimes, and it is very true, a lot of things that we see here today, tomorrow, they are not there. We see people today, tomorrow, they are not there. We see them with their wonderful things that they want you to have, and they want to drag you there, they want to lead your life there, and all that. It looks so great at the time, and pressure, and everything else, and even your own people are calling you. Are you not in the same America as the so-so-and-so person from our village? The guy is building them. And the last time, you know, and they will magnify that which that guy is doing. They don't know where the money is coming from. He's building a four-story building. Since this, you have been in America for over 20 years. They are reminding you that you don't have anything on. And it is very true. Every time you go home, you are sharing a place in the family house. And the same family people are telling you that uh, so so and so person in your village, also in the same America, is doing so much. In other words, what are you doing there? Are you not in America? Are you not in the same America? But sometimes, you, you know, it, 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 you, you don't, you know, we don't rush into life. We don't compare our lives with others. It's just a matter of time. Some started early, but it is better to start with God. I said some started early, but all that I can say is that it, it is better to start with God. Because if you start with God, you shall surely end well. If you start with God, you shall surely finish well. But starting without God is a risk because you don't know if you will get there. Amen and amen. amen. Okay. You see them today, tomorrow they are no more. You see them today, tomorrow they are no more. Your life is cut short. So what are you doing with that four-story building? There? This is not to tell you don't build. Don't build. Hallelujah. Amen. Real estate is good. Build with God. 
Hallelujah. I want to stop here. But let me stop with the... I'm not going to explain. I just want to give you the story. A man of God who lived and served God who went through so much problems. Can you possibly be a man of God, a pastor? You live your life, you serve Almighty God, but the problems are just too much. Let me tell you, Jesus Christ himself, Jesus was not rich. He was poor. The apostles that followed him, they were not rich. They were also poor. Most of them, they live a poor life. It was a choice. I'm not saying that live a life, a poverty life. That's not what I'm telling you. I'm just telling you that prepare your heart. That when you are going through situations, the devil cannot use anything as a bait to destroy your life. Amen. That which you must cherish in life, you have to keep it in your heart. Because there are some things that are important in life. That's all that I'm saying. The Lord said that we have to seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything else shall be added unto us. People live their lives for the addition. Read those things that they are, they are living their lives for. They come to us as an addition. Something that you didn't work for. It just added to you. What are we trying to say? All these apostles, look at how they died. Many of them, I mean, all of them, all of them beheaded, stoned, and you name it. The last one, John. John, you know how John died? John, the old man, they put oil in the fire. The oil. A big flat pound of oil. And then they put John inside. The boiled oil. And they put the man in there to fly him. But these are great men of God. But they look at the, all this stuff and they say that when I look into these things that I'm going through, that I have been through, compared to what they have today, we will see them over there. We say, we were there because there. how did you do this? We are in the same race. May the Lord strengthen you to go through your situation. May your heart never fail, no matter how much pressure that the enemy put on you. Amen. Give no room to the enemy to destroy your home, not your marriage, not your health, not under any condition. Give no room. Stay steadfast in the power of God and the Lord will see you through. I said I was going to tell you a story. Let me tell you the story and I, I close right here. We have baby dedication today. Second Kings chapter 4. Let me read from verse 1 going. The message version says, One day, the wife of a man of God from the guild of prophets called out to Elisha. So the prophet Elisha was there and the wife of a man of God went to him. And the woman said, Your servant, my husband, is dead. So the man of God is dead. The woman is a widow that went to the prophet. He said, she said, you, prophet Elisha, you well know what a good man he was. Say, so you know, you know my husband. You have been, you have seen my husband. You know how good man he was. He was talking about the personality of the man and the ministry of the man. How well this man served Almighty God. He was a good man devoted to God. And now, the man to whom he was in debt is on his way to collect by taking my two children as slaves. The man of God lived. He was lacking so much to the extent that he went and borrowed. He put himself in debt. And he died in debt. Don't die in debt. 
the Lord said that dying in debt, borrowing is not something that is, that is good. If you borrow, you have to restore. But we are reading a story about a man of God who lived, devoted to God, served God, but died in debt. And the woman went and told the prophet of God, the man to whom my husband owes money is now at the door. He doesn't want anything else. The only two sons I have, he wants to take these two sons as slaves to pay for the debt. So the man of God, Elisha said, 2 Corinthians 4, 2, said, I wonder how I can be of help. Listen to what the man of God is telling her. I wonder how I can be of help. Tell me, what do you have in your house? What do you have in your house? What do you have in your house? For the sake of time. But you know, what do you have in your house, what do you have? You are in the midst of problems. So much is going on, but what do you have? What is it that you have in your house? What do you have? So, the woman said, nothing. And it is very true. Most of the time, when we are in the midst of problems, we don't see anything. You don't see anything because all that you see, problems. And all that you see is you are finished. So even when, that is why, because problems, they disturb your mind. So their mind is not even thinking right to even see what you have and how can you come. I mean, you sleep on your bed, the pillow. You keep thinking, thinking, thinking. Problem takes you so far. You are looking for solution for you. I mean, from all around. The man of God said, what do you have? The woman said, I have nothing. He said, well, I remember. I do have little oil. Little oil. Look at the problem. You owe, your husband owe. And they are coming for your sons. So if you are taking their sons, you are talking about little oil. What is little oil going to do with that which the man wants? It will not pay for anything. And that is how it is. Every time when you're going to see what you, if you're able to even have something, you're going to see that the problem is beyond what you have. That what you have cannot come to solve even a little thing in the problem. Never, never ever be enough. Never. Little oil. So now, <laughs> the man of God, Elisha said, here is what you do. Go up and down the street and borrow jacks and bowls from all your neighbors and not just a few. All you can get, borrow. That is why, you see, if you don't listen to the right source, you will not have a solution. The man of God, if Elisha is a man of God, he is not given any direction outside God. It's God that told him. Tell this woman to go and start borrowing all these jars. That is what we have said. That the solution is when you start listening to the spirit of the Lord. You are in the church. You are going through problems. I mean, as I have always been saying, I said, go, don't go and start talking about your problems to people. If you want to talk, if you really insist to talk, come and talk to me. Come and talk to your pastor because... I mean, you just have to be a real man of God because a man of God will never share anybody's problem with anyone. Not even with your wife. And if your wife tells you, how did it go? Just say, it went well. If she asks you who came for counseling, talk about something else. Talk about something else. Counseling is meant for you, the person that came, and you. And your God. Three people. The man of God, God himself, and the person that came for the counseling. But if you go out there, the one that you say you trust, and start explaining things, I can guarantee you, the next thing you know, if the fear of God is not there, your problem is all out there. 
yet you didn't want anybody to know. So if you don't want anybody to know, either you come to your pastor, knowing that you have to be sure that your pastor is a real man of God. But the best is to go to your God. Sometimes you, don't, you go, you don't hear. It is, it, it is well. Uh, the calling of God upon our lives comes as a package. She knew that she can trust Elisha. She went to Elisha. And Elisha said, okay, that is what you do. Direction from God. And God told her what she must do. So what is it that she do? In 2 Kings 4.4, 4, so the man was telling him that once you have done that, collected all these bowls, come home, lock the door behind you, you and your sons, pour the oil into each container. When each is full, set it aside. So she did what the man of God said. She locked the door behind her and her sons and they brought the containers to her. She filled them. When all the jugs and the bowls were full, she said to one of her sons, another jug, please. And the son said, that's it. Mom, that's it. There are no more jugs. Then the oil stopped. She went and told the story to the man of God. The man of God said, okay, go sell the oil and make good on your debts. Live, both you and your sons, on what is left. Amen and amen. amen. You know, that is how God is. If in the midst of your problems, you would think of God. If in the midst of your problems, you would think of God, you know what's going to happen? You know, the Lord is definitely going to open the door. Something definitely is going to happen to the situation that you are going through, which is definitely coming to God. If you will knock at God's door in the midst of your problems, you're going to receive divine revelation. You will, you, will, you will get divine possibilities. Things that seem to be impossible, you're going to see that the Lord is going to open doors. Something is going to happen. What is it that you do? When we say, go to God, pray. Go to God, pray about the situation. Tell God what you are going through. Pray and pray. Lord, it is only you. that can. And you know, sometimes you don't even need to say this thing because you can tell that it's only God that can come to your rescue. I am here. You are all that I have. You brought me here. Here I am in the midst of this problem. Where do I go? Do I go to the same people that keep on mocking me? They will even mock your name. They tell you, he said, look at him. Every Sunday he's at the church. He's the one that is Friday night. Holy Ghost fire, Holy Ghost fire, look at him. They will mock me, Lord. Let me close myself in that door. That room and start calling on the Holy Ghost fire. When you lock the door, and you know, that is, that, he said, go, go, and then lock the door. Lock the door. Then whatever that is happening there, you know, the moment that one knows how to lock himself before God, or let me, divine possibilities, you're going to see them. You will see divine possibilities. You will see what people are not going to see. You will hear what people are not going to hear. You will come out of that room, and from one reason or another, things are changing. Where you are not thinking that solution will be coming from, you know, one is stepping in and you don't even know. The money is not there to pay them, but they just, they don't know why they are doing it, but they are just doing it. Because there, there, there is a divine power behind. Our God, he will make a way. He said, where there is no way, the Lord will still what? Make a way. The man of God said, now you have oil. Before you said you don't have anything, just little oil. God will use anything that you have in your hand. May the Lord help you to have something in your hand. This one is very important because some of them had already written themselves off. 
Some people are living, they don't see themselves as human beings. When in the midst of the problems, they see themselves as, I'm finished. I'm no more. Problems had made people, problems had shut their mouths. Problems had kept people locked in rooms. Problems had just let people run away from places and from friends. Problems had even stopped people from coming to church. Problems. God, if you are not here for me, if you are not there, why would I continue serving you? Why? That is what problem is capable to do. But if you will set your eyes, you must live in the consciousness that every problem has an end. You must live in the consciousness that every problem has an end. You don't have to live in the consciousness that your affliction and your trials will never end. They shall surely end. Believe that your trials, they will not be there forever. And believe in divine possibilities. That God, people have faith. They see miracles. But when it comes to them, they think that God cannot do it for them. If the Lord did this for someone, and the person came here and testified, why do you think God cannot do it for you? Someone uh, met me in the street and was like, ah, Pastor Charles, I, uh, I have heard that people, uh, blind people's eyes are being opened in the church. Did that truly really happen? I said, come and see. I said, come and see. What do you want me to tell you? I said, come and see. You know why? He said, is that truly happening? He said, well, those things that were happening with Jesus Christ, but those are the old days. Can the Lord do these things today? I said, come and see. I will show you the woman and she will tell you her story. Amen and amen. amen. Unless you have been through situations. Unless you have seen the power of Almighty God. Nobody can tell your story. It's only you. May the Lord give you that grace. You know, the, the, the Bible calls it the unfolding grace. Renewed on daily basis. Let that grace keep you going every single day. Set your eyes on Christ. It is never finished until the Lord says it's over. If God had not finished you, no man can finish you. And no situation can finish you. May the Lord bless you. In Jesus' name, his word is given. Let's say amen. Amen.